All right, yogis, welcome. So my name is Kelly, and this will be our 60-minute vinyasa level two class tonight. No worries if you don't think you're ready for level two, you'll be fine. You can always modify things as you need. Um, take what you need, leave what doesn't work for you, and know that always you can add on challenges as well if I don't challenge you enough. So for today's practice, um, you might have been emailed a playlist. Um, if you didn't get the email playlist, um, the one linked up with this class is called Hanuman. So you can go onto my Spotify account and um, find the list labeled Hanuman, and I'll let you know when to start it. As far as props, um, you can see I've got a lot of props today. You don't need quite this many. Um, two blocks would be nice or something that you can um, push onto or perhaps prop yourself up with. So pillows can work as well. Um, or if you have a bolster, that will work um, just as well as, um, uh, as pillow as well. So we'll get ready to get started today and I'll talk a little bit once I get you into your first shape with where we're going. So we're going to begin in a reclined Supta Baddha Konasana. So you can bring the soles of your feet together and let the knees come out wide. And you have options here. If you'd like it to be supported, maybe you take your blocks underneath your knees. And the closer you have your blocks to your body, the more supportive it'll be. The farther away, the less. We're going to lie down on the back, but before you do, if this um, you don't want supported, know that you can also bring a block underneath the feet, and that will actually um, allow for a little bit more hip opening here. So find what works for you and then hold on behind the back of the thighs and roll yourself down into Supta Baddha Konasana or reclined butterfly pose. So you could cactus the arms, you could have the arms down by the side, you could have a hand on the heart, a hand on the belly if you would like. Find what works for you. And right away we'll begin with a little bit of hip opening here. So we are working towards a peak posture today, or a couple of peak postures, but as the playlist might um, kind of hint to you, we're going to talk about Hanuman. And talking about Hanuman brings up the asana or pose Hanumanasana. So that's full splits. Don't be too nervous. There's lots of different variations of that, lots of different ways to find it. But while you're settling in, I would like to tell you just a little bit about Hanuman. So Hanuman is the Hindu monkey god. He's one of the most celebrated, worshipped figures in Hindu religion. Many of the stories relating to Hanuman tell tales of extreme courage, power, and devotion. He's a main character in the epic Ramayana, which tells the tale of Lord Rama and his wife Sita. Sita was taken hostage by the demon Ravana and held on the island of Lanka. Rama entrusted Hanuman with the task of crossing from India to Lanka to rescue Sita. The story goes that Hanuman knelt down in hero's pose on the southern shore of India. He gathered strength in meditation, remembered his devotion to Rama, and leapt over the ocean to save Sita. He defeated the demon of Ravana and returned Sita back to Rama. Because of his bravery, perseverance, strength, and devoted service, Hanuman is regarded as the perfect symbol of selflessness and loyalty. Worship of Hanuman helps one to counter the bad karma born out of selfish action and grants the believer fortitude and strength in their own trials during the journey of life. Just a little bit of bhakti added into your class today or the yoga of devotion. So these postures or asanas are sometimes named after um, gods or goddesses, and it's nice to know a little bit of the history behind it. You can think of that full split as when Hanuman left over the ocean from India to what is Sri Lanka to save um, Sita to take her back to her king or lord Ram. If you'd like to play the playlist, now would be a good time to start it. Beautiful. We'll take a couple breaths together here. Take a nice inhale in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. Let's do that again. Nice inhale in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. One more time. Nice deep breath in through the nose. 
Open the mouth, exhale, and release. Let's continue to warm up our hips and start to bring the hamstrings into this as well. Begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, reawakening the body. And eventually take your hands to the outsides of your knees and gently encourage the knees to come together. So feet are planted on the earth. And then right away, hug your right knee into your chest. You can interlace the fingers around the front of the shin. Take a little squeeze here of the right knee in towards the shoulder. So creating a little compression in front of that hip. You can stay here or lengthen the left leg out long. So that takes that opening into the front of the hip flexor. Beautiful, and from here, we'll start to wake up those hamstrings. So release the hands and then kick the right heel up towards the sky. So straighten the leg. And you can have the hands behind the back of the thigh. If you'd like to, this to be a little bit more power, you could not hold on to the leg at all using the core and the strength of the leg to stay up. Also know you could take peace fingers around the big toe if you'd like that big toe grip. Again, we're asking the back of our legs or the hamstrings to start to warm up. We're gonna need them today, but we wanna take the time to allow them to open up slowly. You can stay exactly where you are. If you'd like, you could start to bring that leg a little bit out towards the right. Don't feel like you need to take it out all the way. Maybe a little hip opening, but not a lot. Beautiful. And then gently bring that right leg back up through center, bend into the right knee, and then bring the left knee back in. Plant the left sole of the foot down, cross the right ankle over the left thigh. So we found supine pigeon pose. And here you can stay here, gently pressing the right hand into the inside of the right knee for a little opening of the right hip. Or you can begin to rise up and interlace the fingers around the front of the shin here to begin. Lie back down and take that stretch first for the hip. Now, hold on behind the back of the thigh. So release your left leg and let it kick up towards the sky. Flexing the toes in towards the face. You're always going to feel that a little bit more from the back of the leg or the hamstring. You can encourage that shape any amount towards your body to feel it a little bit deeper. Beautiful. Releasing the hands, bend into both the knees and let the knees come towards the armpits. Let the heels come towards the sky. You can hold on to the outsides of the feet or even the outsides of the thighs if you need. Or again, that peace finger grip on the big toes. Let's find a Nanda Balasana or happy baby. Very gentle encouragement of those knees towards the armpits. You can find a little rocking action here if you'd like. See if you can keep your lower back down onto the earth. Go ahead and release this. We'll take the other side. So hug the left knee in towards the chest. Let the right foot plant down first. Little compression here for the front of the left hip. Squeezing out our psoas here. And that option to lengthen the right leg long. So we're opening the psoas on the right side, extension of that right hip. Taking it into the hamstring, release the hands and kick that left leg up towards the sky. So sole the foot towards the ceiling and again, the option to hold on behind the back of the leg or don't hold on at all, bringing a little bit more strength into it. So not only are we gonna work on lengthening the hamstrings today, but we're gonna work on strengthening them as well. Options here, you can hold on to the leg and pull it in a little bit or piece fingers around the big toe, keeping it up straight or taking a little bit out to the side. So I like in the stretching in the muscles, you wanna think about a rubber band. If you continually just stretch it out, it becomes weak. We're not only gonna lengthen things, but we wanna strengthen them as well. So I'll bring in that left leg back through center. Bend into the right knee, plant the right sole of the foot down, and then cross the left ankle over the right thigh. So again, we found supine pigeon. Know that you could stay here. We'll take it a little deeper. Lift the shoulders up, reach in between the legs. Hold on on, on the top of the shin to begin, and then lie back down. This is more of a hip stretch. You'll feel this compression in the left hip, perhaps. 
Also external rotation. Now from here, release the hands and then reclasp them behind the back of the right thigh, kicking the right leg up. Flexing those toes in towards the face. Now we're taking it into the right hamstring. Again, you can encourage that shape any amount towards the body to feel it a little bit deeper. Beautiful, we'll release that shape. Uncross the legs and again, come into happy baby. So your own variation here. And maybe this time you'd like to straighten one leg at a time. Maybe straighten both legs out for a moment if that feels good. Keep whatever grip that you have. You can bend the knees if you'd like. I have a little challenge for you. If you can hold on to your legs, we're going to have a little bit of a core challenge. Begin to rock a little back and forth. You're going to see if you can rock up still holding on to whatever you're holding on to into boat pose. So Navasana, so the legs could be straight here, you could be holding on. You might be holding on somewhere else you might have let go. Otherwise, hug the navel into the spine. Maybe now you decide to reach away. Know that you can let those toes land down if you'd like. We'll be here for a couple moments. Hug the navel into the spine. Try to lift the chest up, igniting the entire core. Beautiful yogis. Now begin to release that. Just cross the ankles. We'll come into a Sukhasana pose for a moment. Holding on to the knees, we're going to take some cow and cat in a seated position today just to warm up the spine. As you inhale, lift the chest, lift the chin up, lengthen the spine. And as you exhale, round the back, tuck the chin into the chest, cat. Inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest. You can use the hands as leverage here to come through a little bit more. As you're ready to exhale, slowly lean back, tuck the chin into the chest. Continue on with your own breath for a moment. And you can go as fast or as slow as you'd like here. Just bringing some movements into the spine. After your next round, go ahead and stop into the center. Hold on to the knees for another moment and just stir the upper body around the hips. Doesn't matter which way you go, we'll just take this for a moment. Not spending as much time on warm ups today, we're going to actually warm up in our flow sequence so that we can get everything in that I'd like to get in today. I'll gently stop in the center and take it back the other direction. All yogis, go ahead and stop into the center. Roll over the knees, and we're not going to mess around. Come right into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So tuck the toes, lift the hips up high, adjust as you'd like here. You can pedal out the feet, starting to wake your dog for a walk here. See if you can relax across the shoulders. Try to roll the armpits down towards the mat or in towards your heart to widen the shoulder blades here. We'll be getting to find stillness. We're going to continue to warm up our hips and take a little bit of a warm up for our legs as well. As you inhale, roll forward into high plank. Once you get to high plank, check in. Your wrists are underneath your shoulders. Your heels are right above your toes. Your navel is into your spine. Beautiful. Nice deep breath here. As you exhale, bend into the knees. Hover them down, but don't let them touch and then start to press your chest back towards your thighs. Once you get here, now start to lift your tailbone towards the sky, but keep your chest pressing towards your thighs. Then you can straighten your legs into downward facing dog. Beautiful, we'll do that two more times. As you inhale, roll forward into high plank. As you're ready to exhale, bend into those knees, let them hover, and then press the chest back towards the thighs. Once you get here, lift the tailbone up, but keep the knees bent for a moment. Now begin to straighten the legs. We're trying to lengthen the tailbone up towards the sky. One more time. As you inhale, roll forward into high plank. As you exhale, bend those knees, let them hover down, and then press yourself back. Then begin to lift the tailbone up. Beautiful. Now stay here for a couple of breaths. Let the heels come down towards the earth. 
Know that you can always have a bend in your knees, or you can straighten your legs if that feels okay in your body. Nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale and release. As you inhale, roll forward into your high plank. This time we're taking it down, so knees can be up or down, chaturanga. Keep the elbows by the side as you lower all the way onto your belly. Once you get down, hands underneath the shoulders, the tops of the feet touch down. Cobra pose, bhujangasana. As you inhale, just gently lift up. It doesn't have to be really high the first time. And exhale, slowly lower down. Beautiful. Bring your hands out a little bit farther away from the body and then lift the um, center of the palms up, so tenting the fingertips. As you inhale, lift the head, neck, and shoulders up. You can stay up here if you'd like, or my new favorite stretch is to bend the elbows and let my chest come a little bit back down. So it kind of stretches around the armpit area, which is something we don't usually do. So feel free to stay here for a moment. You can bring one shoulder down at a time if that feels good for you. In a moment, and a little back bend here. Beautiful. Inhale here, and then exhale, slowly lower down. So the hands can come underneath the shoulders or lift the hands up, slide them down more towards the top of the waist or a little lower down on the rib cage. We're gonna come into upward facing dog, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. As you inhale, press into your hands, now straighten your arms, lift up. So the palms of the hands and the tops of the feet are the only thing touching down. Navel stays into spine. Can you bring your chest through a little bit more in upward facing dog? As you exhale, roll up over the toes, lift the hips up high, downward facing dog. Auto Mukha Svanasana. Nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale and release. Inhale, look forward, prepare. Walk, step, or jump to the top of your mat, forward fold. Our first Uttanasana here, generous bend in the knees. You can wrap fingers around opposite elbows, or perhaps even wrap the hands around opposite ankles. Take a moment here with that nice bend in the knees. We're allowing those hamstrings to warm up. Movement or stillness here, whatever feels good for you. From here, we'll release whatever grip you have, finding Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Slide your hands onto your shins. Now we're gonna be here for a moment because I want you to feel the strength in the hamstrings. So lift up enough that the shoulders and the hips are even here. So you're lengthening the spine. You feel the backs of your hamstrings light up. Now exhale, forward fold. We'll do that two more times. As you inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana, lengthen. Exhale and fold. One more time. Inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Keep your shoulders where you are. Just bring your hands onto your hips and then rise all the way up. Once you reach the top, reach your arms up over the top of the head. Connect the palms. Exhale, hands to heart center. Samatiti. Beautiful. Release the arms down by the side to Dasana Mountain Pose. Take a breath here. Beautiful. As you inhale, circle the arms up over the top of the head, reach up. As you exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the hands, step the left foot to the back of the mat. Bring the left knee down, untuck the toes. So this is supported low lunge. We're gonna turn it into lizard lunge. So bring your right hand to the inside of your right foot. You can toe heel your right foot out just a little bit here. Now we're warming up the hips, so take advantage of this. As you inhale, bring your chest forward. As you exhale, walk the hands back and then flex the right toes in towards the face. So this is half monkey splits, but we have our hands on the inside of our leg versus on one on one side of each. Beautiful. We're going to move this. Walk the hands forward. Re-bend into the front knee. Come forward. Inhale. As you exhale, walk it back. Ardha Hanumanasana. Half monkey splits. Flexing those toes in towards the face. One more time. Re-bend into the front knee. Come forward. Chest forward. As you exhale, take it back. Again, Ardha Hanumanasana. Half monkey splits. Beautiful. Re-bending into that front knee. Walk the hands forward. 
Keep the left hand down onto the mat. Take the right hand to the inside of the right knee. Gently encourage that knee away from your body. So come onto the knife edge of the right foot. So we're opening the hip to the right. Beautiful. And then from here, if you'd like, you can bend into that left knee and maybe you reach around and hold on to the foot. So this is a quad stretch. Now this is pretty early in class, so if this is too much, no worries. Couple breaths here. Beautiful. We'll release that if you've taken it. Release it carefully. Bring the right hand to the outside of the right foot. Tuck the left toes. Lift the right leg up. Shake it out for a moment. Beautiful. Three-legged dog. All five toes facing towards the floor. Inhale, reach. As you exhale, knee to chest, glance forward. Beautiful. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to chest, glance forward. One more time. Inhale, reach the right leg high, three-legged. As you exhale, glance forward, step the right foot in between the hands. Supported high lunge this time, so the left knee is lifted. As you inhale, bring the chest forward. As you exhale, straighten the legs. So this is modified pyramid pose. If it feels good, you can bend into the back knee for a moment and then re-straighten it. Inhale, bend into the right knee, bring the chest forward, come through. Bring glide into the hips. As you exhale, lift the hips up, straighten the legs. Again, you have that option to bend into that left knee for a little bit of a stretch. Maybe you straighten it as you inhale one more time. Bend into the right knee, come forward. As you exhale, this time straighten both legs, keep them straight. You have the option to lift your right toes up off of the mat, and that again will take that more intensely into the hamstring, that flexing action. Beautiful, re-bend into that right knee, look forward, step your left foot up to meet your right, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold. Plant the hands, step the right foot to the back of the mat. Bring the right knee down, untuck the toes, and then we come to our lizard lunge. So bring the left hand to the inside of the left foot. So heel that left foot out a little bit here. Now that your hands could be on blocks. As you inhale, chest comes forward. As you exhale, Ardha Manasana, walk the hands back, straighten that front leg, flex the toes. As you inhale, walk the hands forward, bend into the knee, bring the chest forward. Exhale, walk it back, straighten that front leg. Beautiful, re-bend into the front knee, inhale. As you exhale, straighten that front leg and walk the hands back. Fold in just a little bit deeper. Beautiful, as you're ready to inhale, walk the hands forward. Again, here, we'll take the stretch and twist. So right hand down onto the earth, left hand to the inside of the left knee. And then let that left knee fall away from your body in the mat. You can come onto the knife edge of the left foot if that feels good. Know that you can absolutely stay here in twisted lizard. If you'd like a quad stretch or the top of the leg for the right leg, bend into that right knee. And maybe you just stay here because even that activates it. If you can, the left hand can reach around and hold onto the right foot to take it a little bit deeper. If you're holding the foot when you release it, I don't want any slingshots. Slowly let that leg come back down. Take your left hand to the outside of your left foot. Toe heel it to the center. St uh, tuck your right toes. Step your left foot back and up, downward facing dog. And again, shake that left leg out for a moment. Beautiful. Three legged dog. So press the back of the left leg up towards the sky. Toes pointing down. Inhale here. As you exhale, knee to chest, glance forward in between your hands. Inhale, reach high, three-legged. Exhale, knee to chest, look forward. One more time, inhale, reach up. As you exhale, look forward, step your left foot in between your hands. Now you can have blocks underneath the hands here if you would like. Bend into that front knee, inhale, chest forward, right knee stays lifted. As you exhale, straighten those legs, find modified pyramid pose. Again, here you have the option to bend into that right knee if that feels good. Restraighten it and then bend into the left knee as you inhale, chest comes forward. As you exhale, straighten both legs. Option to bend into that back knee to take it a little deeper. Restraighten it, bend into that front knee, chest forward. 
As you exhale, straighten the leg. This time, keep them straight. And again, you have that option to lift the left toes up off of the mat. So only the heel is touching down. Again, taking it a little bit more into the hamstring. Beautiful. Rebend into that left knee. Let the toes land down. Look forward. Step your right foot up to meet your left. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale and fold. Inhale, root to rise. Arms up over the top of the head. Reach up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Samasiti. Beautiful. Release the arms down. Inhale, circle them up. As you exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plant the hands. Step or hop back. Take a vinyasa. So Chaturanga Dandasana. Either halfway or all the way down. As you inhale, find cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Shanasana. Couple breaths here. So I won't be cueing exactly what you're doing in the vinyasa today um, or describing it as much as I usually do in level one classes. You guys should know what you're doing. So you can take what you'd like. You can also skip the vinyasas if they're not working for you. Let's take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth. Exhale and release. Beautiful yogis. Inhale, lift your right leg high, three-legged dog. This time, bend the knee, open the hip. Let the right heel come down towards the left glute. Opening that right hip a bit, turn the right shoulder back down. Beautiful. As you inhale, straighten that right leg, three-legged dog. As you exhale, knee to chest, glance forward. Inhale, reach long, three-legged. Exhale, knee to chest, glance forward. One more time, inhale, reach long. As you exhale, step that right foot in between your hands. High crescent lunge this time. As you inhale, rise up. Arms reach up. Back left heel is lifted. Inhale here. As you exhale, cactus your arms, drop your left knee down to a hover. Inhale, reach long. Straighten the leg, arms up. As you exhale, hover down. Beautiful. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hover down and hold for three, two, one, very gently let that left knee land down and then reach the arms up. This is Anjane Asana. Now you have the option here to keep the back toes tucked or you can flip them over if you like. Sit a little bit deeper into that right hip, a little deeper bend in that right knee. Inhale. As you exhale, without touching down, see if you can find that half monkey splits. If you find the toes are tucked, it's a little easier. I actually think it's a little harder. Flex those toes in towards your face. Beautiful. As you inhale, rebend into that right knee onto the asana, reach the arms up. And then as you exhale, hands come down to frame the foot. Tuck the back toes if you have it. Lift up into standing split. So you're standing on just your right leg. The left leg flies up. Hands framing the front foot or hands on blocks. It's up to you. All five toes turn down. So this is a really big hamstring stretch here. Know that you can always bend that left knee and bring that left heel in towards your glute and then re-kick that leg up. And I can take that stretch a little bit deeper. Beautiful. From here, we're coming up. So bend that left knee in. Bring the knee in towards your chest. Knees touch here. Maybe it stays hovering as you lift up. Hands can come to heart center. Hug your left knee into your chest. So this is Ekapada Tadasana. From here, we find tree pose. Let that left knee come out to the side. Any variation of tree that works for you. So the foot can be on the inside of that right leg. Take a couple breaths here. You can grow your branches if you'd like. Challenging your balance. Beautiful. We bring the hands to heart center. We're going to take it into what's called temple or devotional pose sometimes. Let that left ankle cross over the right thigh and begin to bend into the right knee to sit down a little bit. So just taking that stretch just a little bit deeper. Working on our balance here. Beautiful yogis, begin to rise back up. Hug that left knee into the chest and begin to kick it back. So we're finding warrior three. That left leg stays lifted. Hands can be heart center or you can fly the arms back or more challenging forward. Bend into that right knee ever so softly. Let those left toes land down and we come back into our high crescent warrior. Inhale here. As you exhale, straighten your legs, bring your arms back. So this is floating pyramid. And again, if you'd like a challenge, can you lift your right toes up off of the mat? Yes. 
And then we're going to bend into that front knee, come back into your high crescent warrior, arms up, hands to heart center. We're going to open it up into warrior two. So let that left heel turn down, knife edge of the left foot, parallel to the short edge of the mat. Nice deep bend in that right knee. Glance down the right fingertips, the right middle finger, and sink just a little bit deeper. Two more breaths here. Holding here for strength. Now stretching it out as you inhale, straighten the legs, arms up, look up. We call this flying warrior. And then we're gonna turn warrior two to the back of your mat. So just switch your feet. Warrior two to the back. Sit down just a little bit deeper here. We'll take peaceful warrior, flip your left palm, right hand down the right leg, left fingertips, reach up, inhale. Beautiful. And then slowly rise up, warrior two. Begin to straighten that front leg, it should be your left one, and then step your right foot in a little bit. We're going to find triangle pose or trikonasana. The hips come back, the left fingertips reach forward, and then tick-tock the arms. Find triangle pose. Stay a little bit more lifted here if you would like. Reaching up. Couple breaths. Beautiful. From here, we let that right hand come down to meet the left. And then walk your hands to the center of your mat, the long edge of the mat. Turn the toes in, heels out. Prasarita Padottanasana. So a, a stretch for the um, backs of the legs. The elbows can come down here. You can hold on to the outsides of the feet. We'll spend just a little bit of time here letting the back of the legs stretch out. Triple yogi is bringing your hands back underneath your shoulders. We'll take a halfway lift, lengthen the spine, and then bring your hands onto your hips and slowly start to rise all the way up. Keeping the hands on the hips, we're going to turn the toes to face the front of the mat. So the right toes in front. Separate the feet a little bit. We're looking for pyramid feet here. So pyramid pose or parsvottanasana. Lift your chest up and hinge at the hip, come halfway down. Again, we're stretching out the hamstring. Hands could stay at the hips, or maybe the hands come down to frame the foot as you fold in just a little bit deeper. A couple breaths here. Know that it's okay for that left heel to be lifted, or take a little bit of a bend into the right knee and really press into the left heel to work the hamstring on the back. Beautiful yogis from here, inhale, take a halfway lift, hands underneath the shoulders, bend into the knees and step the left foot more towards the back of the mat. We're going to come back into that lizard lunge, so bring your hands to the inside of your right foot. I'm going to turn forward to show you this here. So you can stay in lizard here, you can drop the back knee, taking whatever variation of lizard that feels good, maybe even the twisted lizard. If you'd like to work into Ekapada Kundanyasana B, or um, flying splits or flying lizard as it's sometimes called, feel free to do so. We're going to show you that really quick, but I'm not really demoing it today. It's something you can add in if you'd like. So you'd find your chaturanga arms, sliding that right arm underneath your right leg. You can come forward and see if you can lift off. So that left elbow works as a kickstand for you. Beautiful. Taking whatever variation you would like, lizard or the arm balance, and then eventually either shoot your legs back, step the legs back, find a vinyasa, or simply meet me in downward facing dog. Your choice. Couple breaths to get there together. Beautiful yogis. Nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. As you inhale, lift your left leg high, three-legged dog. Again, bend the knee, open the hips. So let that left heel come down towards the right glute. So keep that left shoulder turned down towards the earth. Opening the left hip. As you inhale, reach that left leg long, three-legged dog. As you exhale, knee to chest, glance forward. Inhale, reach long, three-legged. Exhale, knee to chest. Bring yourself into that high plank and glance forward. Inhale, lift up, three-legged dog. As you exhale, look forward, step the left foot all the way to the front of the mat. The arms come up over the top of the head, high crescent warrior. 
Back right heel is pointing up towards the sky. Feet are hips width distance. Inhale here. As you exhale, bend into that back knee, cactus the arms, hover. Inhale, reach long. Legs straight, arms up. As you exhale, hover down. Beautiful. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, hover down and hold for three, two, one. Very gently let that right knee land down. Again, the toes can stay tucked. Reach the arms up. Anjane Asana. You can also untuck the toes if you'd like. Can you sit just a little bit deeper into that left hip? So bend a little bit more into that left knee. We're really targeting, stretching out the front of the right hip. And here we have that challenge. See if you don't touch your hands down, come into Ardha Hamanasana, half monkey splits. Bring the arms back, fold a little bit more. Beautiful. As you inhale, look forward, bend into that front knee, plant the hands, tuck the right toes if you need to, and come all the way up into standing splits. So let that right leg come up high. All five toes facing towards the floor, hands frame the right foot. And again, if you'd like, you can bend into that knee for a moment, heel in towards the glute, and then lengthen the right leg up a little bit more. So coming up from here, bend into that right knee, hug it in towards your chest, maybe connect the knees to help you, and then lift all the way up, hug that right knee into the chest, at the Tadasana. For a moment, and then we're gonna turn that knee out and find whatever variation of tree pose works for you. So maybe the foot is on the inside of the thigh, maybe the inside of the calf or the ankle. Try to avoid the knee. Take a couple of breaths. You can grow your branches if you'd like. We're working on our balance here. From here we find devotional or temple pose. So bring the hands down to heart center. Let that right heel come across the left thigh and then gently start to bend into that left knee. Sitting down any amount. This is also called standing pigeon sometimes. I stretch for the outer hip. Beautiful. Start to rise back up. Hug that right knee back into the chest. And then we find warrior three. So kick that right leg all the way to the back of the mat. Hands can stay at heart center. Or you can fly the arms back. Reach the crown of the head forward. Gentle bend into that left knee and then very gently let those right toes land down. Inhale, arms rise up. We're back into our high crescent warrior. And then as you exhale, straighten both legs and bring your arms back. Again, we're finding that floating pyramid. And we have that option to see if we can lift the left toes up. Kind of hard. Beautiful. Rebend into that front knee. Come back into high crescent warrior for a moment. And then hands come heart center, open it up, warrior two. Bend a little bit deeper into that left knee. The right foot is now parallel to the short edge of the mat. Fingertips are reaching. Glance down the left fingertips. Sit a little bit deeper into the front knee. Opening the hips here, hold for two more breaths. Body is in the center of the two legs. Beautiful, from here, straighten the legs, arms up, look up, stretch it out, five-pointed star. And then turn warrior two towards the back of your mat. So bend into the right knee this time. Glance down the right fingertips. Flip the front palm, reverse the warrior or peaceful warrior. So left hand gently down that left leg, right fingertips reaching up. Inhale here. As you exhale, rise back up, warrior two. And then straighten that front leg. We're coming into trikonasana or triangle pose. Reach those right fingertips forward, hips back, tick tock the arms. Right hand could be onto a block or the shin or even the thigh. Maybe stay a little bit more lifted here for today's variation. Work on trying to find the length in the sides of the body and expand here. Beautiful, one more breath in here, reaching the left fingertips up. As you exhale, left hand comes down to the inside of the right foot and then hands crawl to the long edge of the mat. Again, Prasarita Padottanasana. So bringing the toes in, heels out. Your variation, maybe the hands stand or the shoulders. Maybe they walk forward for a wide-legged downward dog. Maybe they walk back. You can hold on to the outsides of the feet. If you have an inversion in your practice and you'd like to go upside down, you can do that for a moment. Although this is an inversion on its own. You don't have to actually stand on your head to get the benefits of doing an inversion. 
We're stretching out the backs of the legs here. Beautiful yogis, eventually the hands underneath the shoulders so we can lengthen it out in a halfway lift. Hands come onto the hips and then slowly begin to rise up. Use your core strength. We're gonna find pyramid to the front of the mat. So turn your toes to the left. Step your right foot in a little bit. Again, you can find the width in the step here. So it doesn't have to be a narrow stance. Lift your chest, hands can stay on the hips. Just fold halfway to begin. And we're working those hamstrings. Strength along with length. Hands can stay onto the hips or you can release them to find black on either side of that left leg if you would like for a little deeper fold. Cars Hotanasana. Try to keep the right hip turning forward. You know you can have a little bend in that front knee. That's actually better to try to lengthen the back of the back leg if you can't have both legs straight. Here, inhale, halfway lift, hands underneath the shoulders. Gentle bend in the knees, and you're gonna send that right leg all the way to the back of the mat. Toes are tucked for now, bring the hands to the inside of the left foot, and again, we're coming into that lizard lunge. So your variation here, again, the back knee can come down if you'd like, you can take that twist, you can come down onto your elbows. If you'd like to play with the arm balance or Ekapada Kundanyasana B, know that another way to get into it is going to three-legged dog for a moment. And then as you bring your left knee towards your tricep forward, bring yourself down on your chaturanga arms and straighten your legs out. It's just a different way to take it. Couple more breaths in your arm balance or lizard. Eventually, you'll find your way back. Take a vinyasa. We'll all meet in downward facing dog. Couple breaths there once you arrive. Beautiful yogis, we'll take one breath together. Inhale in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale and release. One more flow, we're gonna go through this a little bit quicker. As you inhale, lift your right leg high, three-legged dog. One time, as you exhale, knee into chest, look forward. Inhale, reach long. Exhale, step your right foot in between your hands, rise up, high crescent warrior. Inhale here. As you exhale, hover the back knee, cactus the arms. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, hover down and then let that left knee land. Reach the arms up, Anjaneyasana, sit a little bit deeper. And then straighten that front leg, find that floating half monkey split. From here, look forward, bend into that right knee, tuck the left toe, standing splits, lift your left leg up. Time not waiting too long. Hug that left knee into the chest and begin to rise up. Left knee all the way into the chest. And this time we'll have a um, variation of half lotus tree, if you would like. So taking the left foot to the top of the thigh. If this doesn't work in your body, feel free to take another one of what we've already done. You can stay here for a moment. You can hold the foot. Couple breaths here. And again, you can stay here or taking it into Utita. Asta Padagustasana, so big toe pose. So bring the knee into center, maybe the piece grip around the left toes, right hand onto the right hip. Maybe you straighten that leg out in the amount. Again, you don't have to be here if you don't like, you can let it open out to the side. The arm reaches for balance. Beautiful, coming back to center, we all hug the knee into the chest and we kick it back, we find that warrior three. So kick that left leg back, and then very gently let those left toes land down. Find your high crescent warrior, inhale. As you exhale, straighten those legs. Flying pyramid or floating pyramid. You can just flex those toes in towards the face. And then re-bend into that front knee. Inhale, rise up, high crescent. Open it up, warrior two. Sit a little bit deeper here. And then as you inhale, rise up, flying warrior. Switch the toes, warrior two, towards the back of your mat. Stay with me. Flip the front palm. Inhale, peaceful warrior. And then straighten that front leg. This is peaceful triangle or reverse triangle. But we have options here. From here, we can come into triangle pose or look in front of the left toes and find half moon pose, Ardhachandrasana. So let your right leg launch off. Maybe the left hand is on a block or on the mat. 
Right fingertips reaching up, flex the toes in towards your face. One breath here. If you're in triangle, you can do the same thing. We're gonna find half moon the other way or triangle the other way. So put a little bend in that left knee. Let the right toes land down gently and then see if you can find Ardha Chandrasana or triangle to the front of the mat. Inhale here. As you exhale, bring the hands down onto the mat and just turn the left toes down. So we're back into our needle pose or a standing split. We gently let those left toes land down onto the mat and fold. Beautiful. Inhale, take a halfway lift, plant the hands. Step the left foot to the back of the mat. We're going to kick the right leg back and up into three legged dog. This is just a transition for a moment. You can shake that right leg out. We're gonna find a very quick pigeon pose. So bring that right knee into the chest, right knee, right wrist, right ankle, left wrist, and find pigeon pose. Keep it a little bit lifted. So walk your hands out in front of you and tuck your back toes a little bit here. And see if you can lift up and then press down into this. We're just gonna be here for a moment. Beautiful yogis, let your hands come back in. You can inch your nut knee in a little bit and then kick that right leg back and up. From here, right foot meets the left or it can stay lifted. Find a vinyasa or take a downward facing dog. You take a three-legged vinyasa, make sure that when you get into your back bend, both feet are on the floor. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale and release. Inhale, lift the left leg high, three-legged dog. One time, as you exhale, knee into chest, plant forward. Inhale, reach long. As you exhale, step that left foot in between the hands, rise up, high crescent warrior. Inhale here. As you exhale, lower down and hover, cactus the arms. Inhale, reach up, straighten the leg. As you exhale, slowly lower all the way down. Again, Anjana Asana, reach the arms up. Toes can stay tucked or not. Find that floating half monkey split. Wing the arms back. Flex the toes in towards the face. Looking forward, bend into that front knee, hands down, or maybe not. Lift that right leg up. Find standing splits. As a transition, right knee into the chest. A little bend in that left knee as you begin to lift up, hugging your right knee in towards your chest. Beautiful. From here, we find that variation of half lotus, if you would like. So the knife edge of the foot to the top of the thigh. Finding your balance here. Hands to heart center. You can hold onto the foot if you would prefer. And stay exactly where you are. Again, I'll give that option for big toe pose. Let the uh, right knee come in towards the chest. Peace fingers around that big toe, left hand, left hip. Straighten that right leg out any amount. Maybe open it out to the side. The arm opens out to counter that. Taking it to wherever works for you. We'll bring that leg back forward. We all re-bend into that knee first and then kick that right leg back. Find warrior three. Hover in here, hands heart center or digasana with the arms flying back. Very gentle bend into that left knee. Let the right toes land down. Inhale, rise up. High crescent warrior. As you exhale, straighten those legs. Arms come back. Floating pyramid. Maybe let those left toes leave the mat. And then re-bend into that left knee. Come forward. High crescent. Hands to heart center. Open it up. Warrior two. Bend deep into that front knee. And then as you inhale, straighten the legs. Flying warrior. Warrior two to the back of your mat. So spread down into that right knee. Stay with me, flip the front palm. Peaceful warrior, inhale. Peaceful triangle, straighten that front leg. Inhale here, option for triangle or Ardha Chandrasana half moon. Look forward, bend into the front knee, maybe launch off. Find half moon pose. Block underneath the hands can be helpful or block to the earth, or hands to the earth. Flex those toes. Beautiful. So from here, again, we're either going to find triangle or half moon to the other side. So bend into that standing leg. Let the left toes land down. Take your time. And then lift that right leg up. Half moon or find triangle. Up to you. We all meet in standing split. So let that hand come down onto the earth. Turn the right toes down. 
So we let the right foot land down onto the earth and fold into pyramid pose for a moment. Go from here, take a halfway lift, walk the hands forward a little, bend into the knees, step the right foot back, and then send the left leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Shake it out for a moment. Again, we're going to find that quick pigeon pose. Inhale, look forward, hug your left knee in, left knee, left wrist, left ankle, right wrist, and stay lifted here. So keep the back toes tucked, walk your hands a little forward. So this is a very active pigeon pose. We're taking this more as a stretch than anything else. Lift your chest up. Maybe sit down just a little bit deeper. Beautiful yogis, you can walk your hands in a little closer to the body. Maybe bring that right knee in a little, tuck the toes, send the left leg up high, downward facing dog. Again, we either take a three-legged vinyasa or you can meet me in your downward facing dog. Once you arrive there, we'll take our breaths together. Nice deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, exhale, and release. Beautiful yogis. From here, we let the knees come down onto the mat. Walk your hands back in towards your body. Begin to sit on your heels. So this is hero's pose. And know if this isn't for you, you can always find a block to sit on. So just take a couple of breaths here. We've gotten our body nice and warmed up, so we can do a couple more things. Beautiful. As you're ready, or maybe not, lift your hips up off of your heels and bring your hands onto your hips. You can widen the knees a little bit here. So I've got a challenge for you here. I know if it doesn't work in your body, you can skip it. But if you can, you can bring the weight over onto the left knee and see if you can bring that right foot forward to the top of the mat without touching down with the hands. Beautiful. So we're in that Anjane Asana where you can reach the arms up. So we sit just a little bit deeper. And then from here, we find that half monkey split. So bring the hands down this time. So this is where we have our options. We have a lot of options here. So half monkey splits is great. You can have blocks underneath the hand. I'm going to grab the blocks to show you our different variations. Or if you're ready to work into Hanumanasana or full monkey splits, you can begin to toe heel that left foot forward and the right leg back. Now for me, I know I'm never going to get into full splits and I'm okay with that. So block underneath the thigh can be extremely helpful here. And then a block underneath the hands for support as well. You can also bring the block to the front of the right thigh. The left thigh can be good. Beautiful. And then just come to where you can take it. Remember, half monkey splits, you're still getting a lot of nice work done here with that forward fold. Take a couple breaths. Imagine Hanuman leaping across the ocean. Beautiful yogis. Put a little weight into your hands. It's hard to get out of this in any kind of graceful way, but try to make your way back into half monkey splits. So let that uh, right foot come back in a little bit towards your body. Find your half monkey splits. And then re-bend into that right knee, supported low lunge. From here, let the left um, foot come a little bit to angle across the mat, and you're just gonna sit down behind your left foot. And then hug the right knee in and bring it over. So we've come into half lord of the fishes here. So the right knee is up. Bring the right hand behind the body. Left arm gently holds on to the knee and you gently twist to the right. Beautiful. And then gently come back to center, unwind. From here, we're going to find a very short pig uh, double pigeon or fire log. So let that left shin come parallel to the short edge of the mat. See if you can attach your ankle to your knee, stack the knees on top of one another. So this one can be very challenging. We won't be here for long. We get to walk the hands forward in the amount to fold. Beautiful, gently starting to come up. Unwind the legs, shoot them over to the side. And then come back into a quick downward facing dog for a moment. If you'd like to take a vinyasa, feel free to do so. We'll meet in down dog to take the other side. 
As you're ready, knees come down onto the mat. We sit the hips down onto the heels. Heroes pose for a moment. And then as you're ready, lift those hips off of the heels, hands onto the hips. And again, we have that challenge. This time we're stepping the left foot forward. So see if you can not hold on. Lean over to the right, step your left foot forward. Find a little bit of bend here. Lift the arms up on Janayasana. And we come back into that half monkey split, Ardha Hanumanasana. And maybe this is where you stay, working very deeply to the back of the hamstring. If you'd like, you can begin to let that left foot come forward to see if you can start to, and then tuck your right toes and walk them back. And again, block underneath the left thigh, or even on the front of the right hip. It can be nice, or no blocks, you can have blocks underneath the hands too. Maybe you're really far away, maybe this side's completely different, maybe this is easy for you. Just breathe to wherever you are. And we're never pushing this into a point of sharp or shooting pain. So we can meet restrictions in a lot of different areas. It's not always the hamstrings. Sometimes it's also the front of the hips. We spent a lot of time opening the psoas today, so hopefully that's helping. Beautiful yogis. Let's take one more nice breath in Hanumanasana. And then eventually working yourself back into that half monkey splits. And then we'll re-bend into that left knee, come forward. And then we're going to angle that right shin a little bit across the mat so we can walk back and sit down. And we hug the left knee in towards the chest, and then we find that half lord of the fishes. So left hand behind the body, right arm reaches around and hugs the left knee. You can gently twist to the left. Gently release your twist, and again, we find double pigeon or fire log pose. So let that right shin come out. Hopefully, it's parallel to the short edge of the mat, and see if you can stack the left shin on top. So you do want to try to have the ankle and knee connected here. If the ankle is way on the shin, I know it's easier, but you're not doing the pose. Even if there's a lot of space here, that's absolutely okay. Maybe you stay lifted, or you begin to start to walk forward. Very large uh, hip opener here, external rotation. A lot of times you feel this in the piriformis down the sides of the outer hips. Beautiful yogis, begin to bring your hands back. And this time we're just gonna uncross the legs and let them come out straight in front of you. You can shake them out a little bit if you would like. So we're nice and open today. So we're going to take one more stretch to end. And there's going to be a lot of different variations here. So you're going to see what you can work into. So begin by hugging your right knee in towards your chest. So this is Mari Chasana. From here, let that left right knee fall out to the side. And so this is a variation of John Yushrasasana. And you can stay exactly here if you would like. Or, if you would like to give half lotus a little bit of a try, we've done quite a bit of hip opening today, so you might be able to, it might be accessible to you. So hold on to the outside of your right foot and see if you can fit it into the crease of the thigh. And maybe you're just in half lotus here. You can stay here, maybe you find a forward fold. You can hold on to the left toes. Or, if you'd like to try for full lotus, if this is easy for you, Begin to bend into the left knee and bring that knife edge of the left foot a little closer to the right knee. Now the first thing that has to happen is your right knee has to be touching the earth. If it is up here, I don't even want you to try. If the right knee is touching the earth, then you can hold on to that left knife edge of the foot and see if you can bring it up. Full lotus pose. Again, always a challenge. If this is easy for you, maybe the hands come down to the side and you begin to lift up. You can always take blocks underneath your hands if you have T-Rex arms. Makes it a little bit easier, you can play with that. Just one more breath in whatever variation that you're in. Beautiful, and then slowly begin to release out. Take your time, straighten your legs out, and shake them out. All right, yogis, let's take the second side. Know that this can be a very different adventure, so hug the left knee in towards the chest. Again, starting in Mari Chasana. 
Letting that left knee externally rotate out to the side. If you're in John Yusharsasana, then this is a great place to stay. This is also a nice stretch for the back of the hamstring. If you'd like to try the half lotus on this side, you can bring that knife edge of the foot up into the hip crease. So maybe on this side you're like, okay, this is going to be enough. I'm just going to work on the forward fold. Know that if you're feeling really feisty, you can bring your left arm around the back of your body and look for the big toe of the right leg and then reach for the foot. A little bind, fancy pretzel pose. Or if you'd like to try for a full lotus, again, start to bring that right shin or right, yeah, right shin or right heel in. But remember, the key is, is that left knee touching down? If it is, then you can bring that right foot up into your full lotus. So lots of places you can meet restrictions here. It doesn't really matter. Know that you can also take sadasana or just half lotus. And again, if you'd like to practice flying, hands down, maybe lift up, swing it around a little bit. A couple more breaths here. Know that you can also fold forward. Beautiful yogis, walking your hands back in and let's uncross those pretzel twisted legs and let them lengthen out. So again, bounce out the knees for a moment. And eventually bend into the knees, plant the soles of the feet, hold on behind the back of the thighs and we're gonna roll ourselves down onto the mat. Just keep the feet planted for a moment. Let the knees touch maybe. We've done a lot of hip opening today. We're going to close off the outer hips a little bit here into our final Shavasana. So hug your knees into the chest as you're ready. And then I want you to cross your right leg over your left. So you're crossing above the knee. And you can take your hands to opposite knees here or opposite shins or even opposite ankles or outside the feet. So this is supine Gomukhasana or cow faced pose. Beautiful. From here, release the feet. Let the arms come out to either side. Let the right toes, left toes touch down. Lift the hips up, move them to the right, and then let the knees land off to the left. Beautiful. And you can stay in this twisted root variation, or I'm going to show you cat pulling its tail today. So if you'd like, lengthen the right leg out. So the right leg is coming out towards the left arm, and you can even hold on to the big toe if you like. Then, you want to take it a little bit deeper, right hand can hold on to the left foot and hug that left heel in towards the glute. This is just a different way to take this twist and you're taking a quad stretch with it too. If it doesn't feel good, then don't do it. Looking up towards the sky is fine. Beautiful. Releasing mat and then bring your knees back to center. Center yourself on your mat. And again, hug your knees into your chest. We'll take the other side. So across that left leg over the right, and you're crossing above the knees. And again, hands wherever works for your body. Just for a moment, taking that nice supine gomokasana stretch. Maybe feeling it in the piriformis or IT band on the side of the legs. So releasing the feet, let the arms come out long. Let the right toes touch down, lift the hips, move them to the left side of the mat and then let the knees land to the right. And again, you can keep the legs crossed here, or I'll show you again, cat pulling its tail. So you let the left leg kick out straight towards the right fingers. And you can take the right piece fingers and hold on to the left big toe. Maybe that's enough here, and you just lengthen your right leg out straight. Or bend that heel in towards the glute, take your left hand and see if you can hold on to your right foot. So cat pulling its tail. So be a quad stretch for the right leg, and again, another hamstring stretch for the left. You've got a twist and heart opening as well. Well, yogi is releasing that. Bring the knees back to center. You can center yourself on your mat. Give yourself a hug if you'd like. And then we find our way into your final shavasana. So that can look however you would like it to look. Let's take a couple of moments here to rest. Just feel how the body feels. So these challenging postures, you can meet restrictions in a lot of different places or you know, obstacles. So once you kind of figure out where your restrictions are, your hindrances are, you can start to work on those. 
And the goal is never trying to get to the perfect point of the posture. That's not what yoga is about. It's about what you're learning about your body, your ability to turn inward and to feel things and to judge where you are. We spent quite a bit of time trying to open up areas today before even attempting those postures. It's always very important to do so. And again, to make sure that we're well balanced, we're working not only on that stretch or lengthening, but also strengthening those tissues as well to keep our bodies safe. So that you can relax in your final Shavasana for as long as you would like. If you'd like to be led out of your practice, begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, starting to reawaken the body. Eventually reaching the arms up over the top of the head, maybe taking a nice full body stretch, taking a moment here. And eventually rolling over onto your left or right side, find fetal position for a moment. Use your bicep as a pillow, hug your knees into your chest, just let everything somewhat reset. As you're ready, pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat. So once you join me in your comfortable seat, we'll close out our practice today with a mudra. And Hanuman, the monkey god, is often seen having this mudra. Um, so is the Buddha. So it's called a Paya mudra. And the mudra is, the idea is fearlessness is what it represents. So take your right hand and place it up forward. So your palm is facing forward. And then the left hand can kind of just come down like right underneath where your belly button is. You can close your eyes and just feel the power of this mudra. Imagining what obstacles you have in your life, maybe how you can find the bravery and fearlessness that Hanuman had and bringing that into your own practice and life. Yogis, thank you so much for joining me whenever you're joining me, whether it's evening or morning. Light and love in me sees and honors the light and love in each and every single one of you. Namaste.